back to Casa Blaga. Today's episode, I'm going back to movies now, at least for this week. And once again, I had an idea to do a documentary. There's a documentary I've been wanting to do. Every week, I say, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. And then, I, and then I don't watch it. So, there is a documentary coming. It just, I haven't... I haven't watched it yet. Instead, this week, I'm covering The Little Mermaid 2023. The, the one that just came out. The one that everyone hates. For reasons I don't know. I It's it's an amazing movie. And I know, I know some people, like Doug, Walk, uh, Doug Walker, the nostalgia critic, he... He just blanket hates all Disney remakes. He's even said in videos, he's, he's like, there hasn't been a single one that's been good. And that's just a terrible way of going about it. Just blanket. I don't like blanket statements like that. There are good ones. I like all of them. But, like, I'm not saying all of them are good. I'm just saying I like all of them. Some of them, like, I I hate how, like, so many people say that the Disney live-action remakes are just shot-for-shot remakes and they don't add anything. Yeah, like, The Lion King, probably. I mean, they they added a couple scenes that didn't really do much. But, like, okay, that one's probably the worst one. That's a bad example. But I still liked it. I saw it in theaters. I'm like, that wasn't terrible. But then he got, like, The Jungle Book, which I never liked the animated one. I loved the remake. But then we got people saying, oh, that's utter garbage. There's nothing new in there. It's horrible. That one's a good one. I liked it. This one, people hated it from the get-go. And it's... and, (laughs) uh, And it's for reasons that people didn't want to just flat out say. They would be like... I don't like the color of Ariel's hair. Yeah, hair. The hair is what I don't like the color of. It's supposed to be red. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no. The most important thing when it comes to casting Ariel is her voice. And so once they announced, once they announced Halle Bailey as Ariel, I looked her up. She and her sister Chloe have a YouTube channel together where they sing. And they each have their own style. But the first thing I ever heard of her singing was her doing a Nat King Cole cover, Unforgettable. And I'll actually uh, insert a clip here. Unforgettable. That's what you are Unforgettable Lonely awful You're like a song of love that clings to me How the thought of you does things to me wish that I am unforgettable too so like that was that was her and as soon as I heard that I was like she's Ariel that is perfect I love that okay um between that clip and now, it's been three weeks. Um, so I stopped recording when I did because uh, something came up like right then. I got a message and I stopped recording to look at it. And um, yeah, but um, long story short, because it's too personal to get into, my entire life was uprooted for three weeks. So I didn't get anything done. Um, and that's why there... Uh, there wasn't an episode. This episode wasn't done uh, when it was supposed to be done three weeks ago. Actually, four weeks ago. Because <clears throat> I started recording this 
four weeks ago. And so, yeah. Anyway, at the time, I had seen The Little Mermaid once. And I think I said in a, at a previous time, the only movie I've seen more than once in the theater is Titanic. I've seen it four times. Twice in 97 when it came out. Once in 2012 when it came out for the 100th, uh, when it uh, was re-released for the 100th anniversary. And then earlier this year for the 25th anniversary of the movie. Well, uh, Little Mermaid was the second movie I've seen more than once in theaters. Uh, first time I saw it was in IMAX. And I watched that and then I came home and started recording. And then about a week later, my best friend and I went and saw it on the regular screen. That's actually the first movie we've seen in theaters together. And then a week after that, I saw it in 3D. So I've seen it three times. I couldn't just see it twice. If I'm going to try to compete with Titanic, I got to at least try to catch up. Technically, it's still in theaters. I mean, it is still in theaters. So technically, I could catch up to Titanic. I just don't want to. Anyway, as you can probably tell by the fact that I've seen it in theaters three times, I really like this movie. Like, I, I, this is probably my favorite of the live-action remakes. Like, yeah. They, I, I have seen uh, reviews, people reviewing this movie, and... I don't know if like people just put blinders on and they just automatically like blanket hate all of these. Like I said, like Doug Walker, like I could tell by you can tell by the the, the expression he has in the thumbnail of the video how he's gonna how the review is gonna go. And and the review for Little Mermaid, he had like a disgusted look, and I was like, yeah, yeah, he's he's gonna hate it. And, yeah, like, his thoughts are basically everyone else's thoughts. And it's really annoying because, well, for starters, when it comes to remakes, I tend to try not to compare to the original. I know that's hard to do for some people. Like, try to imagine it's its own thing. Don't look at the original. Or, I mean, obviously, you've seen the original. Don't be like, oh, well, in the original, they, this was different. It's the same line. Or they said it differently. Or they just did that to, to change things. Yeah. I have, that is an actual complaint I've had. I've, I've heard. They, they, people complain that things are too similar, and then they complain that it's too different. Lion King was too similar to the original. Mulan was too different from the original. What do you want? <laughs> And so this movie, I've been I've been seeing people say that it's just a shot for shot remake. They don't change anything, but at the same time, I've seen people see, say that they they completely changed it to make it woke. It's, I've seen the same people say this. They say both. How is it untouched but completely changed? There are changes in here that do improve on the original story. Well the animated story because as you know it was based on a book and yeah they they make changes from the original animated version that actually that they, they do kind of address some of the complaints people had while also improving on the story warning i will give spoilers here uh yeah <laughs> so if you don't want spoilers, you can go ahead and click off of here. Just know I love this movie. And yeah, that's my review. My non-spoiler review. It's really good. And <laughs> it's not a perfect movie. I'm not saying it's perfect. It does have flaws. But yeah. Spoilers from here on out. So something I noticed about Prince Eric and the animated version he wasn't really a character. He was just a thing for Ariel to obsess over. And he didn't really have a personality or a story or anything. And 
this time they gave him a personality. There's also like they gave him a personality that gave him a backstory. Um, he's a character now. He actually has his own original song, and you like, spend time with him and his mother, the queen, which they added the backstory that he was adopted. So they like that was an unnecessary change, but they did it, and it just. It's one of those. I like that they do that sometimes, where they like an unnecessary change. Like, it didn't have to. It's blah. Now I'm getting to the point where I I can't spoke. So, also something in the animated one, there is no chemistry. Like, literally, she sees him and is like, "Oh, I love him," and it's like you don't even know him. You literally didn't even know his name. And and then she just wanted to be with him because she wanted to be with them. There was no reason. They had no chemistry. This one, they had chemistry. And it's like, I know how this movie's going to end, but I want them to get together because they're so adorable together. And it's like you know, he's trying to find the other girl. He's trying to find uh, the girl that saved him. And it shows him like forgetting about her. It's like, because... Uh, Crimley, Crimsley, Crimley, Grimley, what I forgot the guy's name. I thought he was going to be a surprise villain. Um, <clears throat> he keeps walking up to the prince and goes, Oh, we still have not found the girl, sire. And he's like, What girl? Oh, oh, right. And it's like he's starting to fall for Ariel. And it's like, it's kind of adorable, too. And I was going to say, I wish they'd done that in the original, but I mean, they, they fixed it here. One of the smaller complaints I've seen people say is whenever she picks up the fork and goes, it's a dingle hopper. It's like, what is this thing? And, it's like, and then I, I there's something I have thought of too is it looks like a mini trident. Her father has a trident. She didn't recognize that. Well, in this one, she picks up the fork and goes, why would a human need such a small trident? And it's just like... It's a small detail, but it, like it was kind of annoying in the original. It, like she doesn't recognize that as I mean, obviously it's not a trident. Technically, it's a trident, but like it's not a trident. But she could have. You know, she's gonna misname it, name it something she recognizes, and they did it here. One thing I've also heard people complain about is the scuttle wrap. Um, someone says one of the biggest atrocities of this movie is they made Aquafina wrap. I love Aquafina. Like everything she's in, she's just <laughs> she makes every movie better that she's in because she's just awesome and she's hilarious. And I love that they did that. I didn't know Lin Moran Min Lin. Meh, I can't speak. Lin Manuel Miranda. His name's hard to speak. I mean, say wow, that was unintentional. His name's hard to say. I'm a huge fan of his. And I didn't know he was part of this. But when I heard the rap, I'm like, that sounds like it's something from Hamilton. Like, that literally sounds like a Hamilton rap. And at the end, in the end credits, it said, like, new lyrics by him. And I'm like, oh, that explains it. Ow. Hit the desk. I also had heard complaints of Part of Your World. How in the original, it was more of, like, a quieter, interpersonal... In, like whatever song and it was and in this one it was like this massive epic ballet about ballet ballad and i was like i don't know how i feel about that and then i watched it all three times without fail in the theater that i because all three times i saw it the theater was packed and there's this moment near the end of the song where like she gives us this really loud like, you know, like, a let it go. And whenever, like, she, like, strains her voice at the end, they have a moment like that at the at near the end of the song. And then, like, she stops, the music stops, and there's silence. The whole theater, silent. Even the kids, the first time there, the first time I watched it, there were kids. And, you know, you can hear them talking, laughing, talking, and in that moment, even the kids were silent. All three times. You know that uh, in the trailer, like it shows the, no her singing part of your world? It's right before that. Like, the moment I'm talking about. Because like whenever like the music stops, and then when she starts singing again, that's the part they show in the trailer. And it's like, 
chill. I, I, I know that's like a, like, like a cliche to say, oh, give me chills. Like, all three times. It never happens, but it happened all three times watching this movie. And so, yes, they changed the tone of part of your world and the context of it. Because there's a part in the, in the song where, like, she gets angry. And you can hear, like, the passion in her voice. And, like, Haley, uh, how Hall- I've heard Hallie. I've heard Haley. I'm pretty sure it's Hallie. I've heard her say both, actually, now that I think about it. Anyway, she is such a good performer. She's a good singer and actress. And she got the emotions through that she needed to. Who cares if they change the, the context and the tone of the story and the song? It works for what they're doing. Speaking of changing the context, one of the biggest complaints of the original is that Oh, she completely changed her life to uh, for a guy that she just met. She gave up her voice just for him. Well, <clears throat> this time, before she even sees him, they establish that she's been obsessed with the human world her entire life. Yes, you can make the argument that that was the case in the animated one. Like, she's got all this stuff. But, like... In this one, it's like she wants to be, like she even says, like she wants to be in that world. And, and like they keep having a reminder, like, oh, you're you're not going to, you're not going to walk on the water. You're not going to, wow, you're not going to walk on land. You don't, you're not going to attend dances. You stop, stop hyping yourself up. That's never going to happen. And that wasn't a thing in the first one. Um, I mean, she had an, it's like she had an interest in the human world. But like this is like a, just a flat out obsession. And they, uh, I come, uh, I, that, that Grimly character I was talking about, I think it's Grimly. Um, they, they established at the beginning that, um, uh, King Tr- Triton, uh, I almost, uh, almost said something else. Um, Poseidon, that's, that's, that's a different lore, mythology, whatever. Um, he hates humans because a human killed his wife, uh, Ariel's mom. I, I think that was in the original. They might not have drawn as much attention to it. But, like, that's, like, a driving thing in the movie is he hates humans because they killed they killed your mother. This one's different. That was one person. and And so, like, they keep bringing attention to that. And when you're first introduced to Grimly... I honestly thought he was set up to be the villain because like he, he he's kind of anti, anti, antagonistic but like you find out later in the movie like halfway through that he's he's a good guy. He was just trying to protect the prince at the beginning. When you first see him he's trying to protect the prince, but it comes off kind of antagonistic. And so I thought they were building up that he was the human that killed Ariel's mom. And did you know they easily could have done that and you know, like had some kind of tension with that, but they didn't. And I, I, I praise them for that, that they, that would have been kind of like, like, okay, Disney, what are you doing? But they didn't, they didn't do that. They seemed to set it up, but they didn't actually do it, which is good. And one of my favorite aspects of this movie was Melissa McCarthy as Ursula. When they announced her, I was like, okay, I'm sure this could probably work. It works. She was literally perfect. She was the perfect live action Ursula. She's hilarious. Like, I, I've always known she's hilarious. She's like, every time she stops by the set of SNL and does like a skit or a different character, it's like the highlight of the show. And so, like, I, I figured she would do a good job. But I didn't realize how good she was going to do it. Like, Every scene with her was like she did, 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 did a perfect job, and it was hilarious. Unless you know the scene didn't call for her to be hilarious, then it, you know obviously it wasn't hilarious. Like just her presence is hilarious. She doesn't even have to say anything. Actually, <laughs> there was some physical humor, so yeah, that is, that checks out. <laughs> but you know what I mean. She was funny when she meant to be. So like I am um, another I I one th- oh, 
one thing people are complaining about, like one of the many, many things I see people complaining about, you know how they say, don't judge a book by its cover. And I, I, I also say, don't judge a movie by its trailer. Uh, Sebastian and Flounder don't exactly look that great. Even just ignoring how they originally looked in the animated one, they just kind of no. Well, when you see the trailer or you see the character poses, you're just like, what do they do? But then, like, literally you forget about it. Like, when you're watching it, within 30 seconds of Sebastian coming on screen, I completely forgot. Like, I'm like, oh, this is Sebastian. And I didn't think about it. That's just, that's the character. And you, you just, ah. Uh, it's kind of like the Michael Bay Ninja Turtles, like when they first reveal the, the look, we're all like, "Oh, they look horrible! What do they do?" But you get used to it. That's that's just what they look like. They they did two movies, and I'm like, "Yeah, that's the Ninja Turtles. That's the Michael Bay Ninja Turtles." <laughs> you get used to these things. Like people just like to complain. But yeah, like I, if I was. Going to, I stopped rating movies on here. Like, I still rate movies, just not on here. Because you remember, I started out as a movie review podcast, and someone was like, You're not reviewing movies, you're just talking about them. And I was like, Isn't that the same thing? No, it's not. It's apparently it's not. I used to give review, I uh, give ratings, and I stopped because I'm just discussing it. This one, I give a 10 out of 10. No, 9 out of 10. I, I misspoke. I give it a 9 out of 10. Because. Because, like, I did have one complaint about it, and it it was kind of a weird complaint. Um, Ariel's sisters are in it, because, like, uh, her sisters are in it in the animated one, but they're just random nobodies. It's like, oh, there's Ariel's sisters, but they're, they're in it for, like, one scene, and that's it. They're in it. They're in it for, like, two scenes. And they have dialogue and they interact. You see them interact. My one complaint, more of that. Because when you first meet them, like it's a, in the, in the, in the animated one, there's like a party for Ariel and the daughters. And then and Ariel's missing. Where is she? And in this one, it's just, oh, I keep dropping something. In this one, the, it's just a meeting with, uh, King Triton and his daughters and she's not there no dialogue between the daughters and I, at first I was thinking oh okay there's there and gone whatever and then later after the shipwreck you see, you have a, a short maybe two minute scene with them and that's it you don't really sp granted they're not technically important to the story because they don't really they don't like interact with Eric or anything it was just kind of like a if anything the scene just kind of shows that King Triton feels guilty that was like the whole point of the scene in my mind but I would have liked more scenes with them, like, if they do a sequel. Because apparently Aladdin's getting a, a sequel. I don't know if they're remaking Return of Jafar or if they're doing something completely different. But if they do the uh, Little Mermaid sequel live action or if they make a sequel to this one, I would like more time with the sisters. Okay, that... That came out wrong. <laughs> they should have had more screen time is what I'm saying. Oh, okay, um, sliding this in while editing, I remembered that uh, there actually is an an actual complaint I have about something that's in the movie. Um, in the animated one, Eric finds out Ariel's name because Sebastian whispers it to him. In this one, they do the whole scene differently, which I, I wish they'd just taken the whole song and all together. I think it's problematic. But the way he, the way they, uh, he finds out her name, I think is really stupid, because he's like, 
they're having another, you know, like, um, you know, the chemistry moment where they're like on the boat and looking up at the stars. He goes, oh, that's Ares, and then that's Orion, and that's this. And he's like, what's your name? And he tries to guess a few, and he's like, Catherine. And she gives him like this look, and he goes, okay, definitely not Catherine. She points at Ares, and he goes, Ares? Oh, first he goes, Sky. And then he, and then she like lines up her arm with his vision, and he goes, Ares? And then she like, Ares? So you can't see what I'm doing, but like he says, Aries, and she like puts her finger like over his lips, and he goes, Airy, Airy, yo, and like that's really stupid. I did not like that, but that's my only legitimate complaint about the movie. That does not ruin it for me. Anyway, but anyway, um, yeah. Um, I'm just going to leave it at this. Uh, I'm going to stop recording this. Uh, I will try to watch that documentary that I've been wanting to watch. Then do an episode on it. So maybe the next episode will finally be that documentary. Because, like, I could technically... Because, like, there's a bunch of, like, documentary series that I want to do. But, like... I want the first documentary to do to be like a standalone documentary film because then it would get confusing. It's like this, uh, cause I'm doing TV shows too. And I don't want to be like, Oh, my first documentary. Well, it was a, it's also a show, but it's a documentary. So it's both like, no, I want to, I want my first documentary to be a standalone film. So that's why I'm, I'm skipping so many just to do this one. So yeah, Eventually, I'll get to it. Anyway, I'm gonna end this here.